100 of the greatest sci-fi movies, man. Me, it's your boy Seed. Y'all know what I'm all about here. We're, we're, we're ranking sci-fi movies. Well, I'm ranking sci-fi movies. I'm talking about one a day for the first 100 days of 2022. We're just, we're keeping it going, man. We're all up in these teens. Yesterday, we talked about number 15, that being Dune. Um, and just how beautiful that movie is. I love how the story flows. There's the odd change or two that I don't mind. Um, there's everything about that movie. It's just, you doing is one of those movies, you just put it on mute in the background and just marvel at what you're seeing on the screen, man. He did those characters and that book, or the first half of that book, I should say, Justice. And now with this announcement that Flo Pew might be in there as, you know, as, as not Johnny, Irulan, the princess Irulan, man, man, I'm all for it. But yeah, that was number 15 on this list. Today we're talking about number 14, one that I know some of y'all have been waiting on. It's aliens. And check out this tagline, man. This time it's war. A plus, 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 plus. That's the tagline you want right there, man. When Ripley's life pot is found by a salvage crew over 50 years after the events of Alien. She finds that terraformers are on the very planet they found the alien species. When the company sends a family of colonists out to investigate her story, all contact is lost with the planet and the colonists. They enlist Ripley and the colonial marines to research, I'm sorry, to research, to return and search for answers. This movie, man. It didn't give us space marines. We'd already had space marines through, you know, through military science fiction books and all that kind of stuff. We hadn't really had a whole lot of space marines in movies. So I will give Cameron a little bit of credit for that, man. I mean, directed by Jim Cameron. And there's one thing that is a a a, a fond saying in Hollywood is James Cameron doesn't miss. So you can be snarky. And, and say, who does anybody really want Avatar 2? All you want. That motherfucker rarely drops. And when he does, he drops nukes. So, <laughs> so while even the story of Avatar 2 might be a little bit iffy, I guarantee you, technically, he's going to come with some shit that's going to blow our asses into our cheeks. All right. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what kind of wizardry he comes up with for Avatar 2. But anyways, here's Space Marines. He brought him to the big screen. In a big, bad way. And I dare say over the years, and you've had shit like Starship Troopers and stuff like that. We have not seen Space Marines done better. Normally, they're just fodder to get killed off. And that definitely happens here. But before they do, he flushes a good number of them out and gives them their own personalities, man. You know, cats like your boy. It's kind of what put Bill Paxton on the map, man. With like, with the... with Hudson, there we go. With Hudson, and then and, and you know Private Vasquez, it's oh, man, it's all just great. It's all great. It's it's Ripley facing her fears. Because let's be honest, all of us are going to be Ripley. Why are you going back out there? I'm not going back out there. I just got away from these guys. <laughs> I'm not putting my shit back at risk because you're a horrible company and you want to send people where I obviously told you not to send them. We would all be her in that situation, I think. Mike Bean putting in work as uh, as Corporal Hicks. It's my favorite Mike Bean. Uh, like Terminator is just a half step below that. But man, Mike Bean in this movie. We need whatever happened to Michael Bean, man. We need more Michael Bean and things. Uh, Paul Reiser in this movie is why we didn't trust Paul Reiser in Stranger Things too. <laughs> I don't know if he ever did any science fiction again after Aliens. Don't know a whole lot of his filmography. But if it's sci-fi, I'm like, better better watch that shady fuck Paul Reiser. Man, had a whole comedic series. Mad about you. I'm like, I still don't fucking trust Paul Reiser. Lance Henriksen, I think this is like one of the first times I saw him as Bishop. So, you know, that gives uh, that gives Ripley her, her bias. To overcome after she had to deal with uh, with Bilbo's ash in the first movie. And now she's got to deal with another one of these robot bucks. And this one turned out to be pretty damn cool, man. Bishop comes through for you. Love Bishop. You know, obviously this just gives us this, this transitions. This is kind of like the Terminator T2 thing. Like we get soft Linda Hamilton in a Terminator. And then we get like 
I'm ready to fuck some shit up, Linda Hamilton. In in uh, T2, you get a starting out soft Ripley, just a, just a fucking woman on a job, doing her job. And she has to toughen up really damn quick by the end of Alien. And then she's in full go mode in Aliens. We get that power mech. Us Americans back in the day, we didn't know a whole lot about mechs. Japanese hadn't let that secret out yet. <laughs> so this is like a lot of people's first time seeing something like that on screen, that power loader and in how she works wonders with that thing and to get away from her. You bitch, the newt business, which some people don't like. Those people are crazy uh, being a stand in for her own daughter that had died on her 50 year slumber throughout the space. There's so much happening on different levels. The science fiction part, dope. The action part, dope. The character work, especially of Ripley having to overcome this fear. Dope. Uh, not a whole lot of fat to be cut off this movie, people. So that is it for whatever number this was. What is it? Is it number 16? Number 16 on the list, man. I'm sorry, 14. <laughs> number 14 on the list, Aliens. We'll be back in 24 of the hours. I wonder what it could be right here on Paprika.